Today I brought the doc in because the first time I noticed something was wrong was in high school. And there was a, a guy there that absolutely shouldn't have been a cop, but yet he was hired to be a cop. He was that kind of guy that was judge, jury, and executioner all rolled up into one and he didn't see a problem with it. And when I found out he got hired by a local PD that at the time, which was Universal City then, but at the time I respected them, I don't anymore. So it brought up some questions. Why do bad people become cops? And we've seen bullies become cops. We've seen people talking about where people that were bullied become cops. I don't know how much of that's true, but I do know that I've seen bad people that were bullies and they became cops. I don't know about the other side of it. I've never witnessed that myself, but I assume it's true. Doc, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Well, you know why we're here. So why, just to kind of get things started before we get down to, to the, some of the nitty gritty of it. Why do bad people become cops? Well, uh, let me let me first start off with explaining how this kind of came to be in my mind. Uh, this is something that could be easily overlooked and ignored unless it's put into, into your face and you start to see it. And listening to some things that were said by other auditors, particularly uh, who's not Houston, David, uh, made references to being about 20% of the bad cops and the rest are kind of on a gradient. And so I started to do some analysis based on that and, and, and looking at the George Floyd uh, murder and other things like that. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that uh, bad cops are there for, or from two paths, so to speak, is the more appropriate one. First off, there's people that have an agenda and that agenda is to abuse certain people or disrespect certain people. And there's obviously racism is involved here to some extent. Uh, David at News Not Houston had mentioned that there's a high KKK involvement in the uh, Fraternal Order of Police and other police unions. So that's why a lot of things are kind of never fixed. Um, but essentially, those people became cops to fulfill their personal agenda. And the thing that makes it all happen are two words that have been mentioned hundreds of times. And those two words are qualified immunity. If you can beat up on people without getting punished for it, it makes all the sense in the world if you're that type of person that likes beating up on other people. So those are the initial groups of people and they tend to find their way into higher positions of power because they are aggressive in finding their way up the chain of command and up the power ladder, so to speak. Then there's the other ones who were not really bad cops, but because of the quote thin blue line and don't crap on other cops because that's not the way it's done, that we all stick together, um, they are forced into complacency. And you could take a look at the George Floyd murder where in this case, because it was so public, the cops that should have been doing something have also been charged now because the right thing to do was not what they did. The blue line said, let them go do it, you know, but the right thing was no intervene, you're killing a guy. And so there's, we have these two groups, the, the, the ones that became bad cops, uh, became cops because they were bad to begin with, and the other ones who were forced into complacency because of the thin blue line and, you know, blue cops don't talk about other blue cops, so to speak. If it wouldn't have been for a camera, he would have got away with it. Exactly. And that exactly. guy is exactly the kind of person I was talking about the story at the very beginning about the guy from high school. I could see him being that type of person. Well, and, again, there's, there's a personality type here, too. Uh, we're talking... Uh, there are some people that are 
sociopaths, there's some people that are psychopaths, there's some people that are bullies, and each one has a different unique personality and how they treat things differently. Uh, we can talk about specific examples a little bit later on, but continue with me your questions. Are you asking me to continue? Yes, continue, continue with your questions. Just, you know, like, like uh, you know. We, we oh, I thought, I thought, ne never mind. Uh, well, you know, we talk about sociopaths and psychopaths, and there's probably some other ones in there that you're more familiar with and how to, to identify them. But it seems to me that we've got a, I mean, we've got some prime examples of sociopaths and psychopaths here, just here in San Antonio, police chiefs. Well, uh, if you want to, if you want to go specifics, uh, Joe Lavaggio of Leon Valley is a sociopath. He has an agenda and anybody that gets in this way, he eliminates. Uh, the fact that he would go out of his way to eliminate it, and I'm talking in, in particular in reference where uh, Texas Sheepdog Jack, he came to his house to do a raid on his house for absolutely like no reason at all. Exactly. And that's going no out of his way. Yeah. So there, there's nothing being done in the behavior of the cops in this house, uh, pissing on the floor and everything else. That's that, you know, that's just that's just aggressive abuse. Uh, so that's a, uh, uh, you know, a, a sociopath. Uh, another example would be more of a bully, which would be the chief over at uh, uh, Almost Park. Was it Joe uh, Leggiano, I think his name is? He's just more of a bully. And he's not aggressively going out after people. But he waits for them to fall into a trap, and then he goes and, 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 and overdoes it there. And uh, I think the fact that they took his taser away is an example of, you know. Yeah, but he know, didn't understand. Play. He didn't understand that actually the trap was he stepped into it. I mean, yes, and that's and, that, and that's and that's a bully uh, narrative that they don't yeah. think they just act, and and that that's generally. Uh, that that shows a lack lack of cognitive ability. Where if take a look at an engineer, if if they're doing a process, they need to figure out from getting the raw material in to you know putting it in a box or putting it out for for shipment. They have to think of every step in between. Where bullies just often are more impulsive and take chances and and go in opportunity situations. Uh, but you know. And there, there's a whole variety of things. Let's let's take a different example. Uh, let's take Philip over at High Desert. Uh, I forget what police department there was, but they were having a pool amongst them who was going to be the first to arrest him. So there was financial incentive to go out and arrest an auditor who wasn't breaking the law. And they were clearly looking for for setting him up. And uh, you know, and it was so there was, you know, it, it, it's just this this mentality that is far, far from law enforcement. And the police unions, and it's been said not only by me, and I've heard it by others, and, and quite high up, I think there's been some uh, congressmen and other people at that level uh, that have said that police unions are not acting like unions. Every other union is acting differently, but the police unions are, are looking to overpower everybody and everything. And uh, there's, there's, there's several examples out there. Uh, there's some videos I've seen that reflect this, a series of videos. One of the, one of the videos covered that. Um, but it, it's just the idea that um, there's so much underneath. There's all the driving force. So that's one group. And then, then again, the other ones that are just complacent uh, in, the, in the George Floyd murder, uh, the three cops that were just standing around, they were just decharged. Um, they were just doing the blue line thing, but because it was so public and the, and the public said, no, no, that's not right. You know, you're accessory to a murder and, uh, and that's it. And example after example, and 
you can draw your own conclusions if that's uh, connected to racism or if it's a personal grudge or if it's just, you know, uh, a psychopath looking to control and power of people and, and take charge. And, and that's that's one of the differences. The way I, I, I generally describe it is uh, in the simplest terms of a, uh, a sociopath will stab you with a knife, but the psychopath will stab you and twist the knife because he wants to see you suffer. And that's, well, that's the simplest definition. Well, we've right. done one. Let's do the, do the other one next. <laughs> Which one? Well, you, you've, co you've covered almost part pretty good. But the second part, let's go into Leon Valley a little bit. Okay. And then and whatever else, you know, goes along with it. So, so you, want, you want to talk about Leon Valley a little bit? Yeah, let's, let, let's move into Leon Valley a little bit. Cause, okay. Okay. Uh, all right, well, we have this a structure there that uh, uh, the chief there is actually hiring bad cops. He wants a specific cop with a mindset that matches his. So he's creating a nest of corruption over there. Uh, well, I've heard that there's people that actually work in that city hall that are scared that he will kill them if they open their mouths. I mean, that's just absolutely be downright, they believe that that's why we're not getting any more information from some of the people we used to is because they are just downright scared. And that's the behavior of a sociopath. All right, because they're interfering with the agenda. And, uh, you know, we have different types of cops. And, and I, there was, a, I don't specifically remember the incidences, but there was a cop that was fired in San Antonio, and uh, Zavaggio stopped him up and said he was fired as an auxiliary cop. I don't remember exactly the details, but that's that's a classic example of he wants bad cops. So he wants an entire nest, not just him thinking. He, he wants everybody thinking the same way to be complacent. Now, he doesn't want any good cops on that police to for force. Oh, and... I have heard rumors, but I haven't confirmed it. But the people in, that live in, in uh, Leon Valley that uh, went ahead with the recall election petition thing, they're now subject to uh, harassment and whatever else simply because they exercise their right to, to do a recall election. So that's, that's your classic sociopath. And uh, there are other behaviors that are associated with that. Uh, uh, listening to uh, Justin Pulliam, yeah. uh, who's, who's been, been riding hot and heavy. Um, he's, he's been doing a good job of that. covering them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, no, dar no doubt, I, just, I could say that uh, Zavaggio has a voodoo doll, but no, he's, 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 he's probably gone beyond that. And, and there's no doubt in my mind that he's trying to set up uh, Justin for, for an arrest. Well, and, I, one uh, of the reasons I can't go over there and, and participate is because somebody over is, is very scared that I will be tied to them somehow. And that person is scared about it. And that's, and that's basic intimidation, yeah. you know, and, and again, that has nothing to do with the proper police officer. That all has to do with being controlling of other people not not to be a public servant but to be a dominant controller and it's and, not just one person saying he's that way it's a whole bunch of people that are scared oh and and, and that's that's true i mean if you want to go on a grand scale uh take a look at what happened uh when Saddam hussein was uprooted okay uh when everything was going on and the, and the military was coming in and they were pulling down statues and, and, the, and the crowds were celebrating. Uh, that's, that's one example. Uh, in Afghanistan, uh, the Taliban were uh, the dominant force. So when they were starting to get rooted out, all the ones that weren't, you know, had to grow beards because they, they had to show some uh, compliance. <laughs> the first thing they did, the barbers were very busy shaving off all their beards. 
you know, once once the, once the Taliban was taken out. So that's that's basically what you're describing. Well, you know, there's there's like a couple different levels. There's Savaggio and but I think a good percentage of people that proclaim themselves to be supporters of the police when if a police officer shows up at their house or pulls them over or stops them when they're walking down the street are scared of them they get nervous and but yet they're they'll sit there and say they're not that you shouldn't be and the cops if you're nervous when they pull you over some they'll use that against you and say well you're acting nervous so i'm gonna pull you out of the car and i'm gonna search i'm gonna use that to get you know this that or the other right it's suspicious and, behavior and, and, to be, but they want us to be scared of them. They design it that way. They act that way. But then you get Savadio and some others that just push it even further. Well, uh, again, you're, you're, you're talking different people. Now, if you take different personality types, if, uh, and, and you've shown videos on this, and there's been other channels where uh, somebody gets pulled over and, and, and puts the cop to check. Those people have alpha personalities. They just they just don't take it, you know. <laughs> but if you have somebody who has an omega who doesn't want any conflict or friction uh, and is complacent every every step on down the way, uh, you know that's that's a different group of people, and and those make up the majority. Those are the people that power uh, social media. Uh, alphas lead; they don't follow, and so they're not really concerned about going into social media except as, as you know, information gap or something like that. But um, as far as as this goes, yeah, that you're, you're talking psychology. And uh, Chief Jones had mentioned some things that the cops are trained to do a certain thing. But I, I think what you're seeing now is going uh, way beyond what the training is. Uh, because if they are training people to be bad cops, uh, that would be shut down immediately. So these are cops on their own taking and extrapolating and, and, and you know. Yeah, I know they're trained to, around. police are trained to, you know, to be, you know, take charge of the situation and take that kind of attitude. But just way too many of them don't do it the way they're trained. They, they, they go above and beyond that. They will actually lie to you, step into your face, intimidate you in whatever way they can to get you so worked up and then use it against you. Again, there's a certain amount of psychology that they're taught and, you know, not, not deep psychology, not a, not a proper full degree, but enough to know how to manipulate people. And, and yeah, but they take, there's too many of them to take it to the, to the extreme for personal, you know, ego trip or whatever it is well let, let's let's take a look at what david who's now houston said right. he says that 20 percent of the people are, are are bad cops and i can agree with that um going i think it's more where they can't well everybody has a you know this <laughs> you know maybe up, up where you are there's more and whatever but um as a general rule of thumb i think he's accurate um you know if, you, if you're out in the countryside where there's no Everybody knows everybody else. And everybody's going to be on good name, first name terms. Uh, but in in this scenario here, uh, I think what you're seeing is, okay, let's assume that 20% is the right number, but you're seeing more. Those are the cops. Those are like the three cops that were on the sidelines with the George Floyd. Movement. They were compelled to do that to protect their own butts for whatever reason, whatever thinking was going on. Uh, so... Uh, to be the hardcore, or whatever, and then the then there are some good alpha cops out there. There are cops out there that are good, and they're the alpha ones, and they're the ones that, that can put the bad cops in check. And unfortunately, there's not enough of them. Not uh, many of them at all. Most of them are more worried uh, about getting along and and keeping their job, and to hell with the law, and to hell with the constitution, to hell with my oath. I just want my paycheck, so I'm going to let. I'm not right. going to make waves they need to find right. a different job and, right and uh, 
percentage wise for people that have an alpha personality naturally, uh, I've heard varying numbers anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. And then there's the betas, which are also good leaders, but they're submissive to the alphas. Uh, I think collectively between those two groups is 40 percent, which leaves 60 percent of the population as omegas and not necessarily uh, a dominant personality. They're, 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 they enjoy the, the recognition for a good job and everything else, and they're, they're, they don't want friction. They'll just uh, comply. And that's why they have... There's a lot of people, out. again, cops that are complacent with bad cops simply because of the way the, the thing is structured. And uh, how much you can lay on the police unions for that, I think there's much more than, than is publicly known. The police unions are the driving force. Uh, they are quite the behavior that they're doing is that of similar to what the Nazis did when they took over with Hitler coming to power. So the the people referencing uh, that uh, police unions with a Nazi flag, yeah, there's there's some truth to that. It's not it's not just sarcasm. It, there is a uh, there's some truth to behavior mirrors and. Uh, the same thing, where eventually the whole country became compliant or risk, risk personal harm. And that is the way things go when you, when you have somebody with a uh, dictator mentality. You know, there's, I have known so many people in the military that would not, I mean, they have, they're out there, they're out there for the right reasons, they will give their lives to defend the Constitution and to defend our freedoms. That Constitution and our freedoms mean so much to them that it's more important in their life. But yet we have so many military going into the police department and just throw that out the window. And I'm not saying all, so you guys don't get me wrong. But just too many of these videos were we find out they're ex-military, but they are bad freaking cops. And if any of y'all are watching this, and I duck because I don't think there's that many bad cops can be watching my channel. If it was so important to you then, why is it not now? Why is it? Ha why has it not the same? effect on your attitude and, and why is it okay to forget about all that now when you're in the private sector um, anyway my, my thought is, is corruption starts from top down and uh, when you're military it's, it's, it's much there's no unions so to speak it's, it's you know it's a chain of command and it, it follows on down from civilian leadership and so if leadership at the top is bad the military is going to be bad they're going to do bad things if the top is good and and you know without getting into politics i mean there's there's clear contrast between different presidents and how they treat with different people and act different ways so but in in the sense of speaking i think it has to do with following orders and doing what's said uh, the judgment issue is, I think, the key point which you're trying to identify, Steve, where, um, where they're told they don't follow a bad order is one thing, and you, won't be, you will not be punished for it because you're not following a bad order. Uh, with the police unions, it's a different story. The narrative is switched to the other shoe, and now if you don't do the bad thing, you're going to get screwed. Yeah, and, uh, you know, part of your answer. From my example, from my knowledge, and I've known a lot of military guys, and I'm not sure a lot of people have, they were afraid not to say something when something was wrong because they didn't want to get drawn into it. They didn't, I mean, not, not, that's not, not drawn into it, but they didn't want to get in trouble for not saying something when they saw something was wrong. But it's the opposite way on the police departments. They don't want to get in trouble for saying something when something's wrong. Right. And and okay, it's yeah. not just the 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 qualified immunity. It's and God, how many times have I said this? It's the unions, it's the DAs, it's the judges, it's the mayors. The whole system is designed 
to be corrupt to why are people so headstrong about defending them when it's designed to be corrupt it can't be anything but corrupt when you have all those in place that you got unions that back them with money if they get in trouble the union's there even when they're found guilty of some minor stuff they usually keep their job if they beat their wives they don't get their guns taken away from them like everybody else does the judges treat the police like they don't lie and we do the DAs don't do diddly most of the time when a, there's a bad cop out there. And God, I lost that last one. I just had it, and there was a, <laughs> another part to it. <laughs> well, I, the answer to your question is to identify the very, very first domino. And I have had a chance to do an analysis of this, and it comes right out of that, down to the police unions, the Fraternal Order of Police. They do political influencing, therefore, to get bad people who support cops and disrespect the community into places like district attorneys and into office and stuff like that. So uh, they are the first and foremost cause. So if you basically what I'm saying is if you eliminate the police unions or at least return them to the state of a normal union that actually represents the people for grievances and stuff like that and not try to dominate the whole world, a lot of the problems that you auditors are seeing will subside. It'll be having to root out the stuff that's after the fact, but um, you know, there's just so much. I've had the opportunity myself to meet uh, cops from Australia and New Zealand, and I will tell you that they don't think the same as American cops. They don't have the same mentality. And uh, that's the ones you met, but we got some pretty bad videos coming out of Australia. Anyway, oh, okay, more so, more knows more so New Zealand. More so, than oh, yeah. I only met one cop from Australia, but I met three or four from New Zealand, and you know, it, it, there's there's huge statistical differences. I mean, the number of people that are killed by cops over there is just a fraction, a small fraction, like yeah. you know, like one percent of what they kill in the U state in the states over here. You know, it's it's huge, and. Uh, so the mentality is different. So there's, there's that drive that makes that difference, which is which is based on racism and other personal agendas. And, uh, you know, I, again, the, the first domino that's causing all of this is the police unions. Now that, that's a very professional opinion in the net line. There is no doubt in my mind that's the official cause of all of this. And that's where addressing <laughs> needs to be in place. And, 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 and the topic of uh, defund the police uh, what that actually means. I think you did a video on that yourself yeah. uh, to discuss what that what that talks about. So uh, that's a step in the right direction. That actually addresses the cause and not the effect. I know what that uh, that cause. That other part right. was that I was that I had forgotten a minute ago was some places some. I don't know if it's all the way down to the city or if it's the the state thing, but you cannot get a hold of the record of that cop. They hide it from you. You cannot find out what kind of discipline or trouble they've been in. Some places you can, some places you can't. But some places, I mean, and when I say some, I mean many, if not most. That right there is, tells you something. If they are trying to hide that, there's something wrong. Well, that's your, 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 your I would describe it Leon Valley. Uh, I can remember uh, that Bill Turner for two side uh, had done a full FOIA request on records of a cop that was bothered and he leaked several videos on it uh, explaining this guy's record and everything else, making, you know, putting the dirty laundry in the front yard, so to speak, to show, okay, this is the guy that's out there and doing these things. Uh, so you're correct in saying that it's specific areas, but again, that has to do with the, with the amount of control that's already been influenced by the bad cops. And so if we're talking Leon Valley, uh, Zavaggio clearly has, you know, has, has put fear of life into people. Uh, and that's not, a, that's not a metaphor, fear of life into people uh, if they don't comply. And well, I don't know how many states that, it is, but some of them, it's at state level that they, the police departments cannot release any information on the on an individual police officer's performance. 
I can see some limitations and particularly when it comes to HIPAA and psychological yeah, but I, I mean, and stuff like that. If they can look into what our record is and when we've been arrested and not found guilty, but been arrested for it and investigated for it, why can't we see theirs? If they have been investigated and charged and found that they there was some wrongdoing, whether it be just a, you know internal in the police department or actually the law was broken, why can't we see that? That is just another have, design to I, corrupt the system. I can't answer that because I haven't looked in depth. I mean, I haven't spent the whole lot of time either, but it, it's just another part of a, a system that's designed to be corrupt. Right. And again, if you eliminate the first, if you eliminate the cause, the effect will end. If you've got a leaky tire, you pump it up every week. That takes care of the effect. Patch the hole, pump it up, you're done. You know, so uh, my professional opinion is you've got to deal with the, uh, the police unions and at the minimum, return them back to their behavior of the normal union, uh, because I'm very supportive of unions. I'm not anti-union by any means, and uh, but they're not acting like a union. They are they are acting like the Nazis when they came. came the, out. Like the they Gestapo, aggressively, or whatever the whole the whole schlup. <laughs> but uh, you know, um, but 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 the whole thing there is their behavior is. They're coming through with fear and intimidation. I mean, like, you know, when when you tell a politician that you better comply or we're going to come mess with you, <laughs> you know, that's not yeah. just a, that's not a hollow threat. You know, they're going to come mess with you, and they'll subject you to <laughs> thousands and thousands of dollars of legal fees and whatever else for defending yourself in court. And you know, so it's 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 not a hollow threat. It's 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 intimidation, and that's how. A lot of these things come into power. I mean, if you if you were to do research on uh, how how Hitler came into power and every step of the way, where uh, when the Nazi Party started off, they only had a few seats, and then the next year they had a lot more, and the year after that, it was like a whole almost majority, if not a majority. And so it's a progressive thing. And so what you're describing about not being able to submit police records is part of that. There is a level of intimidation, even though. Uh, FOIA requests, you know, are national laws, not, not local laws. They have to comply. And you're describing that, that to a T. Well, I think, well, I forgot to turn on my timer for the last 10 minutes, but I think we're probably close to it. So I think we're at a good stopping point here. And uh, Doc, I appreciate you coming by and helping shed some light on some of the things and discussing some of these things with me. Uh, I Not know. I can help. I, I think a pro professional opinion uh, is needed with a whole slew of personal opinions. And like I said, I, I have spent a lot of time at doing some analysis on this, particularly over the last three or four months and digging deep myself. And so what I'm saying is, a, again, it's professional opinion. And uh, professional opinions carry weight. Personal opinions are dime a dozen. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there is something to be said of when you specialize in a certain thing, you usually know a little bit more than the, the novice does. <laughs> and uh, years in school pay off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we all have our opinions, but I try to back them up with fact when I can. And that's one of the reasons I invite you here. So, well, I'm just going to just say, Hey, this is PMP news and the doc is in the house and, we're out of here. Y'all be safe and we'll see y'all next time.